Hi. Because you're listening to this podcast, you know exactly how powerful a good podcast really is and how important the right guests are. And that guest could be you. The show today is sponsored by speakonpodcasts.com. They're the world's leading podcast booking agency for B2B and tech brands. And they get people like you on podcasts like this. Find out exactly how good they are by going to speakonpodcasts.com forward slash leader. Fill in the form and they'll send you three podcasts that you should be on. Fuel your brand on podcasts. Speak on podcasts.com forward slash leader. Hello and welcome to the Shiny New Object Podcast. My name is Tom Ollerton. I'm the founder of Automated Creative, and this is a weekly podcast where I interview the industry's leaders about the future of marketing. And this week is no different. I'm on a call with David Byrne, who is brand marketing lead at Aviva. So David, for those in the audience who don't know who you are and what you do, could you give us a bit of an overview? Uh, yes, I am. Well, right now I'm, I make marketing, I make above the line communications for Aviva. Um, historically, uh, I was at St. Luke's for five years, a long time ago, working on brands like HSBC and Diageo and BT. Uh, and then I started my own company up north in a photographer studio. So I did that for years. And then I came back. I worked at the BBC and I worked at Leo Burnett for a while and I worked on a startup, a luxury travel startup. I've worked at media agencies, design agencies, broadcasters, uh, and yeah, now I'm, I'm at Viva. Wow, man, that is that's comprehensive. There's no no uh, employer stone left unturned there. Fantastic. So. Uh, it's in that journey across all of those different disciplines and different types of employers. What is the best thing that you've spent your own money on that you use for work? Uh, right, that's that's a pretty easy one. It's uh, it's my bike, <laughs> the bike to work scheme, and I got a beautiful bespoke Condor. And before lockdown, I could cycle my house into Hoxton every day for about. 45 minutes, 45 minutes on the way back. And it's not actually the bike itself. It's the time that it buys you to think. Um, and so quite often, you know, um, just when you have that silence, where you're not surrounded by other people, where you're kind of focused on the road or just physically trying to cycle faster or battling against the rain or the wind, uh, just really lovely, lovely, quiet time. So that, I think two hours a day of, of quiet, contemplative time by Uber drivers um, is really valuable. So that's uh, interesting. I interviewed uh, Michael Lee from Oatly um, on the podcast a few months ago. Um, and and that, he, he said a very similar thing. Apparently he comes up with all his ideas uh, riding on a bike um, and on the way to work. So, um, so you've... You've done all these different jobs and you've got a super senior job at Aviva now. And as you say, like responsible for above the line campaign. So um, there must be uh, lots of different people to to manage in, in your team and also manage above you. I can imagine that getting quite stressful. So how do, you, how do you deal with overwhelm? How do you deal with the pressures of the job when it gets too much? Yeah, it's, a, it's weird. That I've got a little book. Um, that I bought years and years ago at, at Magma, which was like the little art in uh, Covent Garden. And it's, uh, it's called The Powers of Ten, and it's a Charles and Ray Eames thing. And if, if anyone that's listened to this podcast has got a moment, I strongly, you can get it on YouTube, but I've got it as a, a little flick book. What it is, it starts out a kind of a, as an in someone's hand, and then that's magnified by 10, and it gets to a cell in someone's hand, and then magnified by 10, and it gets... You can start to see a hand, you get the picture, right? And you see uh, a person lying on a piece of grass next to, next to like Michigan in Chicago. And then it, you pan out again, you see Chicago, and then you see Michigan, Ohio, you know, um, Midwest. And then you see kind of the earth and then, you know, the, the solar system and then, then the universe and then, it's really nice when you when you kind of feel overwhelmed by things that quite often aren't 
um, that important in the scheme of things. Just have a little flick through that or watch it for uh, you know, four minutes and you'll just realise how insignificant your place is in the whole in the whole thing. So, yeah, that. Or, or the other thing that I do, but this is a new thing and this is a, probably a little bit more pretentious podcast. Um, I, someone bought me a book of poetry by Ted Hughes. Uh, I didn't really know that much about Ted Hughes, but uh, I'll read a bit of his poetry and he just talks about animals and York, actually. And again, you can just read that and you're transported to a completely different world and it just kind of freshens up your brain and, you know, take a breath and you can uh, get back on with it. Yeah, if you if you if you haven't heard uh, again on on um, YouTube, uh, try Ted Hughes reads uh, his poem, one of his most famous ones called Pike. It's, it's fantastic and beautiful, and his his voice is incredible as well. So again, if you want to just remove yourself from a presentation or a spreadsheet or some Teams uh, messages, then I think- yeah, because what what that strikes me is is that you're removing yourself from being in a a stress situation, which is kind of fight or flight or freeze into a, into a a, a sort of different state of being, right? You know, you're, you're thinking about the bigger picture. You're removing yourself from the feeling of being under attack, which I think psychologically is quite interesting. Are you you consciously doing that or is that just two techniques that you happen to have stumbled across? Well, you know, it's, it's kind of all the interesting people that you ever, you ever meet. And I'm not saying I'm, particularly interesting but you have the interesting people that are interested and interesting themselves they they tend to find they tend to find odd objects and that are kind of slightly tangential very tangential and i think you know especially with all this work that we've been doing around screens where you might not even look up for a couple of hours to just kind of step out and because again the point about the bike earlier you you know, you're meeting new people, you're seeing new um, environments constantly and there are new challenges. You might lose your life in the next second if you're not paying attention. And I think because we're often just locked around a, a laptop screen or in a certain room uh, because we can't go into the office, then taking yourself off to another world, I think it just it just kind of decompresses your, your kind of your brain. Um, so no, it's not a, a conscious thing. It's just a thing I, I found myself doing over time. And uh, again, now and again, you know, I'm sure other people do this as well. But to get away from sort of the digital, I'll just find all, all the books are in this room with me and I'll just go and read one for a little while. And you think, oh, that's really interesting. That I've that about sneakers or what else is over there. I try not to read the marketing books. But there's, you know, there's a whole bunch. Just read a passage of something. So in terms of marketing books, what, which ones do you have in your room? This is a podcast, so I can't see. Uh, but what are your uh, – do you ever like? Do you ever reread marketing books or, or is it a one-and-done type of category? Yeah, no, I'm kind of you – know, you know, Richard Shotton's mind. You see, you see, I see that on LinkedIn every day or, or Twitter if, if anyone follows him. And what he does is he kind of annotates favorite um, famous – uh, marketing books and he'll just take a little picture of a passage which is really useful and he'll just post it and I, I mean probably show my age but that's that's exactly what I do uh, so I can go back to um, I've got perfect pitch over there eating the big fish uh, there's a uh, what is it delusions of brandy that's over there that I can see at the moment hey Whipple squeeze this is stuck on the piano um, yeah it's kind of but the one, actually, the one that I would say that I use the most, and they will like me for this, I think, is um, how to make better advertising and advertising better. And there's, um, you know, advertising's best kept secret. I would say there's, there's two guys called Andy Palmer and Vic Polkinghorne that I used to work with quite a lot at, at St. Luke's. And I worked with, they're, they're amazing. Well, it's like a... It's not an office. It's, it's kind of a, a really lovely design studio, I suppose, um, and in, in Shoreditch. And they wrote a book and all their wisdom's in there. And I, I, I thoroughly recommend the 20 different, no, about 40 different sections. And it's just, it's just really amazing wisdom in it. I think that the, one of the quotes on the back, I think um, Dave Trott says, this book is full of common sense, which is rare. So it's actually full of uncommon sense. And, um, you know, Bob, you know, and it's just, it's, I, I strongly recommend it's just a page on each topic. And there's, you know, the topics are sort of things like, you know, um, 
um, why people buy truth stop exaggerating what's in it for them uh, get your hands dirty uh, bullshit free death to the committee no yes men simplify uh, mavericks and characters you know it's just there's one called Daddy Horsme which I'm not sure I've read in a while but uh, you know it's just it's wisdom that they've collected from big agencies from smart people they're very smart themselves and then they just they've written it down and given it to you and you can probably buy it for about a tenner and it's I'm sure it's worth much more than that so um yeah that's my favorite book so what have you become better at saying no to in the last five years yeah meetings I think is the uh, is the main one I was I was, <laughs> I was in a meeting at Viking Cruises, uh, which is in Wimbledon, on I think it was like a Monday morning about years ago. I was working for an agency that was based in LA, but we were working in London. And my chief exec was supposed to join the meeting. And it was it was like 10 a.m. in Wimbledon, so it was 3 a.m. on a Sunday night or Sunday uh, Monday morning in LA. And the client was late. And, and as I was, you can imagine, I'm thinking, shit, the chief execs join, that's going to be a problem. And the client just went, hey, Chris. And, and, and my, my boss said, hello. And he said, hey, we don't need you in this meeting. And, and Chris had been working on the deck with us and wanted to speak and had a point of view. And he just went, so, um, so I'll speak to you soon, right? And just put the phone down. And I just thought, wow. That, that's punchy. And um, what it taught me is, um, you know, as a character, I try and be nice to people. I'm a pleaser. I, I want to help everyone and, and nurture the team. But sometimes you just got to go, you can't help here. And actually, the the meeting was fine without Chris. He would always add value. But uh, but yeah, the, the guy was just did not care about feelings or inconvenience. He was just brutal. This is what I need to get from the meeting and we don't need you. So off you go. <laughs> That's a fantastic story. And impossible to do a segue between uh, between that and your shiny new object. This episode of the Shiny New Object podcast is brought to you in partnership with Madfest. Whether it's live in London or streamed online to the global marketing community, you can always expect a distinctive and daring blend of fast-paced content, startup innovation pitches, and unconventional entertainment from Madfest events. You'll find me causing trouble on stage, recording live versions of this podcast, and sharing a beer with the nicest and most influential people in marketing. Check it out at www.madfestlondon.com. Your shiny new objects is NFTs or non-fungible tokens. I'm so surprised that this is going to be your shiny new object. So I'm going to pass over to you to explain to the audience what an NFT is, and then we can discuss why it's relevant to the marketers listening to this podcast. Well, okay. So, so I'm going to read from something that's on my screen, which, which okay. might be quite useful, right? But... Uh, it says here on the internet, um, an NFT is in essence a collectible digital asset which holds value as a form of cryptocurrency and as a form of art or culture. Much like art, it's seen as a value holding investment. Now, uh, so what are NFTs? And my understanding is that you can attach, I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing things with my hands here, but it's... <laughs> It's very, it's very difficult to wrestle with it, but I put it in some sort of file format that you can add other files to that won't change over time. So you can, the way that someone described it to me the other day when I first started to think about it is that he was talking about a hotel room. The way that we see hotel rooms in the world, right, is that through a booking site probably, right? So you'll go and you'll go, uh, when is the, you know, when do I want to go on holiday? So I want to go away on Tuesday and I'll come back on Thursday. And, you know, <laughs> again, I'm showing my age, a trouser press is really important for me in my hotel room or, or I don't know, a, a beach view, whatever it might be. And um, 
what's starting to happen in, in the hotel industry, but also in the art industry and obviously financial services, is you can take these files, let's call them files, because I don't know how better to, to um, uh, tokens maybe, I think it's probably a better way to describe them. And you can attach rich media to them um, and build up the value. So at the moment, you know, can you imagine if you had an NFT that had a piece of art on it, but then everyone, so when you, I guess when you search a hashtag on, on Instagram or all the metadata that you can get on, on, on film these days, if that could be attached to a token and so that every part of that experience or say that hotel room so maybe on that token every every person that ever visited that hotel room could attach pictures or their experiences or they could read a poem from ted hughes maybe and attach it to that particular hotel and i just i think that and then what you're able to do is that ip resides my understanding is within that token and then you can uh, sell access and, and reference to the elements on that token in perpetuity. That is my understanding of it, Tom. What amazes me about your choice is, and we've been chatting now for a couple of years, we've done advertisers watching ads together a couple of times, um, but you are the, the most, how can I put this, um, strategic of brand marketers that I think I've spoken to, and you're, you're always sort of on a very high level, and yet you've become fascinated with NFTs, which seems to be the opposite end of the interest spectrum when you know we're talking about how to make the perfect 30 second or 60 second tv spot for an insurance company so what is it about nfts that's captured your marketing brain well it's just it's always cl- it's classic isn't it it's kind of yeah again t- t- so just go back when we chatting the other, the other week at madfest right so no, Noel was there, Noel Mack, and we were chatting about, about him and he was one of his points on his presentation was uh, get your towel down early. And what, what he meant by that is when you see a new phenomena, really explore it, pick it apart. You know, you, you, know, you get some people that, that there's a, and this is a long time ago, they, they get a new thing and then they take it apart because they needed to understand how it worked. And I think there's, Tom, you know this, right? There's a real lack of that in marketing, right? Because people are getting on with their job, right? So no one's got time to get on the side and, and unpick something and take it apart. And and therefore, you just listen to your agencies and they tell you what you want to hear and then they've got their margins and their forecasts and everyone just slides along and everyone makes incremental gains. And what I loved about what Noel Mack said was, you know, when I first heard about TikTok, I got on it. What, what could I, how could I use it? How could I apply it, even if my audience weren't there yet? And I think, um, again, as I get older, you think, well, I, I, I stopped doing that for, for whatever we probably could time poor. But, um, but when I was chatting to the person that introduced me to this, my old chief exec, um, Ronald, I was just, I was just fascinated by it. And I think kind of, you know, that's what good communication is as well, isn't it? Kind of good communication should change the way you think about the world. And again, as I get older, there are fewer and fewer things that surprise you. You become cynical and that's, that's a terrible thing to be, you, you know, if you're going to do great work, if you're going to get people excited, like all great art, it, you always have a, a kind of a new but quite resonant and truthful take on, on a part of the human experience. And if there's a new way of, of packaging up experience through a token, then that's fascinating to me. Uh, can I sell more insurance? I mean, again, you know, ultimately my job is to flog more insurance or more financial services products, but you know, if we if we had some sort of crypto token that Aviva could make, and then you could ascribe more and more of your data points to that, and therefore get a discount on the risks that you might take, um, then that could be that could be a really interesting product, right? Yeah, and there's a number of things I want to kind of explore from what you just said there, but something that's really stuck in my head, and it's just going to start boring people on this podcast, but there's a real tension between those of those of us in, in marketing who are obsessed with the new and like you know, the Noel Max of this world who like you know, they'll, they'll see a new shiny thing and they'll and they'll want to dive into it and get you know up up to their elbows and work out what it is. But then you've got the other end of the spectrum, you've got your you know your Jerry Dagans of this world who's be like, no, it's you know it's all about um, penetration and just getting your brand in front of people at a massive scale and and gradually over time you'll build up the memory structures will that will uh, end up in favorability at the point of purchase 
right? And so, and I see both of those things as being valid. And one of them is a lot more fun than the other, that is for sure. But then the one end is also a lot more appealing to people who are younger. So I, I remember when I first got in the industry, like, 10, 12 years ago um, and social media was really kicking off and I sort of jumped on that because I, I thought it was fascinating but I was I was native to it at, at that age um, whereas whereas now it's like I'm a lot older than that and it's more difficult for me to be native to new things so I've, I've, I've painted myself into a corner here without really a question, but I, the, but what I need to know is what should marketers be doing about NFTs? Should they be thinking, you know, how does how does Aviva create an NFT? How does McDonald's? How do you Nike? What do they do with it? Or is it just a case of observing at this point in time? Well, no, it's it's not. You're right. It's it's kind of uh, indulge yourself. You know, uh, indulge yourself and say, well, you know. I'm constantly busy with Teams meetings or whatever type of meeting it is. Uh, I'll give myself an hour and get a bunch of other interesting, curious people. Again, that's what Tony Davidson was saying about, you know, widens that, you know, come to work curious, come to work stupid. They, you know, and they had that little mannequin, well, the big mannequin man with a blender for a head. And it's just all of the time. And again, you know, uh, De Bono passed away uh, recently, didn't he? And I think what he was saying about ideas is ideas are kind of two or three disparate things that come together uh, that haven't been blended before to, to make a new thing, right? A new meaning. And again, you shouldn't, we shouldn't fetishize new stuff, right? We, we shouldn't, you know, because again, the whole title of this podcast is New Shiny Thing, right? And some of those that, you know, all, all that glitters isn't always gold, right? So, but, but I think to, to keep yourself fresh, to keep yourself interesting, and I know what you're saying about native as well, because you get to a certain age where you, you can't naturally just consume that stuff because you're not part of that ecosystem, that community, and you've got different things that you need to do in your life. But, you know, smart, smart people, interesting people are always interested in new stuff. So I think for each brand, even if, there, was a, there was a great thing. Um, uh, what were they called? Dom Rick, I think was it called? They were, they were like an art collective. Uh, and they used to go to um, Ben Rick, they were called, Ben Rick. And apparently the Guardian used to commission them. And every Monday they'd go in and they'd just do some sort of weird thing about what had happened in culture the week before and present to them to just kick off the week. And uh, they did, the, like, the Ben Rick did this situation. Sorry, I'm going down a, this is, I'm sorry cool. to everyone that's listening, but situationist app, right? So it was a kind of it was based on um, local data. So you would open up your your um, settings and you would put into the situation app uh, who you were happy to meet and what they would do to you should they meet you, right? So uh, and there were like I don't know eight different things. So they would slap you on the head or high five you or shake your hand or come up and kiss you or something, right? Or say a special word, right? But it was just. A, what it was, I'm trying to try to illustrate how slightly bonkers these people were, how interesting and provocative they were. And I, th I do think that as a marketer, giving yourself the opportunity to be surprised and to have your brain changed or something unconventional, it's not just about making money or incremental growth every week is valuable. And whether it, um, whether it has... Uh, an impact on the bottom line or whether it just has an impact on your mood and the way you perform as a, as an organization is interesting. And this little section is when I first started at Aviva, we had the digital campus and there were loads of little kind of digital startups that were sort of hot house within that environment. And quite often some of them were, you know, small gambles. They, they weren't ever going to do anything. They were little side projects for 5% of people's time to keep them fresh, to keep them curious, to keep them learning, uh, to keep kind of momentum going. And that's, I think that's valuable in any organization, full stop. That is so beautifully put. And we are going to have to draw this conversation to a close, unfortunately. But it, it reminds me of my favorite bit of uh, TikTok wisdom that said, your diet isn't just what you eat, it's everything that you consume. And it, and if you apply that thinking to what you just said there, like if, you, if part of your brain diet is new, and even if it is non-fungible tokens or weird sideline quirks of the industry, that there is nourishment in that. 
Yeah, and that, that, that presumably that's how random, odd, anomalous come up that cut through and make fantastic advertising. That's why you get a grill eating chocolate or, or playing the drums. That's why you get, I don't know, Harvey Keitel sorting out, <laughs> you know, who's <laughs> essentially a hitman sorting out insurance. It's just kind of th- those random connections that you that get filtered out in a lot of the crap research that goes on today are the things that cut through and uh, get exponential growth for brands rather than just incremental growth. David, if someone wants to get in touch with you, uh, to discuss these ideas, how do you want them to do that? Yeah, just um, I think people can can tweet me just um, at, at Burn, which is B Y R N E seventy five on the Twitter, and they can just send me a message. Brilliant! Thank you so much. Thank you, Tom. It was really interesting. Thanks. Hi. Just before you go. I'd really appreciate it if you could take the time to write a review of the shiny new object podcast on Apple Podcasts or iTunes, whatever it's called these days, or whichever podcast provider you use. We're an indie podcast, so it would go a long way for us if you could just share the word and give us a bit of a support on those channels. That would just be fantastic. If you haven't got time, that's also cool. And yeah, if you could tell your colleagues about the podcast and also, if possible, don't forget to subscribe. And I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, if you'd like to speak on the podcast or be a guest or you think I'm asking the wrong questions, anything, I'd be super interested to hear what you think. So please email me at tom at automatedcreative.com. Net. That's T-O-M at, uh, I'm not going to bother spelling it. Anyway, you'll work it out. Thanks so much.